in case you missed it, I am not in Chicago this week. I am in Utah getting a little dirty with the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. And uh, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to drive a little bit off-road. We're going to drive a little bit on-road. I'm going to give you a few driving impressions and then I'm going to tell you five good things and five bad things about the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. I'm Jill Simonella with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk and let's take a closer look right now. We're just going to jump right into the exterior walk around of the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness and talk about some of the things that are different and yeah, um, as you can see from my intro, we had already been uh, off-roading a little bit and had a little fun and got a little dirty, but I don't think that should hinder what we're talking about here. So the first thing you're going to notice is a lot of these bronzy gold accents um, around the vehicle and that denotes that this is a wilderness trim. And this little patch right here specifically in the front is going to be covering up a recovery point. So the approach angles, the departure angles are a little bit different and you add a little more than a half an inch in ground clearance to the wilderness version. You do have 17 inch wheels on this, but you also get the um, Geolander all-terrain tires. So you get some beefier, meatier tires, as well as some additional cladding surrounding the vehicle that makes this a little bit more rugged. Now you'll see the wilderness badging here, the cross track is the gold. These are also not painted body color, because as you see, when you're off-roading, you're gonna splash some stuff up there, you're gonna nick it, and so you that way you aren't really nicking the paint. You have your roof rails here that are rated for 700 pounds, so you could put a tent up there. Again, you've got more cladding. And when you come around to the back here, again, the departure angle is also um, set for a more off-road situation. And again, you have the um, recovery points right here when you remove this little gold piece. Another big difference you're gonna notice on the Wilderness model is going to be you have the, the Subaru here kind of emblazoned into the back bumper. Now this also does come equipped with the 2.5 liter engine. This is the same engine that you get in the Sport model, um, but again, extra ground clearance and some more off-road kind of features. So when you lift up the back here, there's a couple things going on in the boot area that um, also kind of connote that this is the wilderness model. You have this mat here, which is waterproof, removable, easily cleanable, and there is an accessory, um, kind of a cover that you can put over the back of the seat that is also going to be um, like waterproof and removable, very easily cleanable. Um, you will notice this has the black headliners so if you're putting a bike in here, then, um, and you put, you scuff the <laughs> wheels on the roof, you're not gonna necessarily um, have any damage to the, um, the, the headliner. and It's not gonna leave scuff marks or anything. But another thing that is unique to the Wilderness model is going to be this light right here um, to shine down. Cause a lot of times you're gonna be out doing active things like off-roading in the desert in Utah and you make it back after dark and um, it's really difficult to load things into a dark space. So um, that is just kind of a helpful little thing um, so that you can see what you're doing. Now, I will point out you do not have um, a power lift gate. So yeah, you're gonna have to reach up and use your own manpower to get that shut. So let's just pop inside really quick and you can uh, see some of the other features. You've got more wilderness badging. You've got this soft text leather material here um, that's really easy to clean, which by the way, after today, <laughs> I feel like I've got dust and dirt everywhere. Um, you've got the uh, reverse stitching here, which is that same kind of gold color. You've got the gold bronze um, 
accent on the steering wheel and you will see the accent on the uh, gear shift as well. This also has the standard large screen. This has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, and yeah, the outdated Subaru graphics. So what else do we have going on back here? Uh, yeah, you know, in the back seat, we do have our bags back here, but this is a compact, or I guess I have my bag back there. Um, this is a compact SUV, so you're not gonna get um, oodles and oodles of legroom, but you, um, you know, you'll have a decent amount of leg room for, um, you know, a small child, somebody my size. I'm, I'm, I'm the size of a 10 year old. Um, and you'll be able to fit adults back there for a shorter amount of time. So you've got the bottle holders in the door. You've got your cup holders here. And yeah, a spoiler alert. This is gonna make my do not like list. Um, nothing to hold your bottles in. Wireless charging, I believe is standard. And just all around, interesting look to this. I love the accents. I, you know, I think Subaru has done a really good job with this. Overall, I really like the Crosstrek and let's say I downright love the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. All right, for this segment of the video, Subaru has designed a little off-road course for us and uh, they did not make it easy. <laughs> they actually didn't make it easy. We have some steep inclines and um, some ruts here, a little opportunity to get some wheel spin and to get a little stuck, but not really stuck. And uh, they have had fun with this. So, um, you know, I think that they've done a really good job with the wilderness because they've added about an inch of ground clearance. They've added some really good hill descent control. And really in this vehicle, you have about the same amount of uh, ground clearance as you would get in a Jeep Wrangler. And yeah, this is a, a little bitty thing and it is really capable off-road. The one thing I will say it is missing is a front camera. And I noticed this especially as we are kind of coming up over hills or going around corners and I can't quite see over the hood <laughs> to see where we're supposed to be going. Um, so a front camera would just be really helpful here. But overall, I think this is doing really well on the Mowgli bits, you know, some articulation and, um, you know, through the, the steeper inclines and declines, it's just very comfortable and competent. And what you will see is, you know, somebody who's going to own this vehicle, Subaru has told us over and over again, the person um, who would buy this is more of a youthful explorer. So they want to go camping, they want to go, you know, hiking, they want to go to some really cool locations and do their athletic thing. But to get there, they need a vehicle like this. And you know, this isn't going to go on the Rubicon Trail, but it's going to take you through some pretty, I don't know, sticky off-road situations to get you to those really cool locations to see some really cool things. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna drive through the rest of this course, and we'll probably end up fast-forwarding it, but um, not driving that fast. But it's just it's a good little course, and it's kind of cool to see what the Crosscheck Wilderness can do. All right, that was just a quick snippet of the off-road course that uh, Subaru has designed for us. We've got some mud, we had some ruts, we had some moguls, and we definitely put that skid plate to use. So um, I think this is just really capable and uh, pretty impressive for what it is and for the price tag, frankly. All right, now that I've done the walk around, I just wanna jump straight into the five good things, five bad things, and we're gonna just pound these out really quickly, and we're gonna start with the good things. So the first thing on the good list is going to be the fact that I really enjoy this powertrain. The 2.5 liter direct injection engine is fine. I know everybody wants a turbo in here, but this does really well. This is the same powertrain you're gonna have in the um, Crosstrek Sport. It does really well. It's good. It's fast off the line. It is great in more urban situations. It does, you know, the engine does whine a little bit when you are doing a hard acceleration, but overall, this is just really, really good.
Now, the second thing that I think falls on the good list is, well, just the fact that it is really good off-road and then you can take it on a road trip and be on the highway and it is also really good there. Subaru did, did a great job creating a balance between off-road manners and on-road manners and that definitely gets a thumbs up from me. Because this is a wilderness model, I'm going to say that number three on my list is all of the gold bronze accents. I think it is very distinctive. You see this coming down the road and you know it is something special. So I like, I like the accents. I think they look really good. Now the fourth thing on the good list is going to be these seats right here. We have literally spent all day with our butts in these seats and they're still comfortable. So I, you know, it, I don't know if it's the cushioning, I don't know if it's the leatherette seating surfaces, but whatever it is, Subaru has done a great job with the seat comfort and it just makes you want to spend a lot of time here. It just does. Now the final thing that I am going to point to on the good list are the material choices that Subaru made with this vehicle. So from the black headliner to the leatherette seating surfaces that are easy to clean to the floor mat that you can just rinse off to just all of the surfaces and materials that you can just wipe down and clean really easy because by the way we got this really dirty today. There is dust and dirt everywhere and Essentially, you can just wipe it down, hose it out. It's going to be good to go. Now, there aren't drains on the floor, so don't actually put a hose in here, but I just think they did a really good job with the material choices. It's not gonna show a lot of dirt and it's going to be easy to clean. Now it's time for me to jump into the bad things about the Subaru Cross Trek Wilderness. And I'll be honest with you, in some points I'm really stretching here, but I'm gonna start with the fact that this vehicle doesn't have navigation. Okay, yeah, you can hook your phone up to the wireless car Apple CarPlay and I'll give that a thumbs up, but we were a lot of times today in places where there was no cell service, so I couldn't get a map. So unless you were somebody who was really familiar with your surroundings and you don't need GPS or a map to get around, um, yeah, it's kind of a problem when you're in the middle of the nowhere and taking this off-road for off-road adventures. I really want the option of having navigation just in case. Another thing this vehicle doesn't have that I think is a bit of a miss is the fact that it doesn't have a heated steering wheel. You do have heated seats, but no heated steering wheel means that if you've been outside riding your bike and your hands are really cold and you come inside, you gotta depend on the heat to warm you up or, I don't know, set on your hands. Now the third thing on my do not like list is a perennial not favorite on Subaru vehicles, and that is going to be the icons that you have on the center stack in the native infotainment system. Yeah, I'm probably gonna wire in or go with the Apple CarPlay wirelessly um, so that I don't have to look at it, but whenever you go back to the native system, you got these big chunky icons and ugh, I don't like those. The fourth thing on the bad list is going to be the cup holders. They are um, just circles. They're just circles. There's nothing in there to grip your water bottle or your um, tea bottle into place and they are gonna bobble around and that to me is a bit of a problem. Now the final thing on my bad list, I, mean, I feel like calling it the naughty list, the final thing that I don't like about the Subaru Cross Trek Wilderness and I've probably mentioned this a couple times already and that is going to be the fact that this doesn't have a forward facing camera for an off-road vehicle. That is a huge, huge miss. You don't need an around view camera, but you definitely need the forward facing camera so that when you are going over some top, tough obstacles, you have the ability to just kind of flip that on and take a look at where you're going. That was a big miss and I really, really wanted that. All right, so you had the opportunity to experience the off-road with us. Now we are driving on road and I have to say one of the biggest things that I am impressed by with the Cross Trek Wilderness is how well mannered it is off road and then how perfect it is on road. So you get some off-road prowess with the comfort of on-road driving. And to me, that's just impressive. Now you're not gonna be able to, again, like I said, this is not for the Rubicon Trail, but you can do some pretty serious and technical off-roading and then you come on the road and you don't have to deal with a lot of, you know, grumpy tire noise or knobby tires or you know the discomfort that you would normally get of a vehicle that is an off-roader so I really like that 
if I had to summarize the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness in one sentence, I'd be hard pressed to do that, but if I were going to do that, I would say it's really comfortable, very capable, and an incredibly attractive vehicle that is good for a lot of different things. So I really like this vehicle. I think that's about all I have to say. You could do a lot worse for $31,000. On that note, I think I'm just gonna sign it off and say, thanks for watching. Please visit us on the web for more information and uh, yeah, I will see you down the road.